uh, with that, we will move on to the next session of Charcha 2020, which is a panel on collaboratives for mass entrepreneurship. Uh, and we have our panelists, game. We have Dr. Anand Deshpande, the founder of the Astra Foundation, founder and chairman of Persistent Systems, and uh, we will have it moderated by Pari Natarajan, the CEO and co-founder of Zeno. Uh, so Pari, I'm, I'm handing it over to you. Thanks, Lashmi. Uh, that was truly an inspiring uh, talk by Mr. Myra. Um, and uh, for us, uh, we are going to talk about how, what are the role of collectives in creating mass entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship in India? And we have um, Dr. Anand Deshpande, um, founder, chairman of uh, Persistent Systems and co-founder of the Astra Foundation, and as well as Madan Padaki, uh, a co-founder of the uh, a Global Alliance for Mass Entrepreneurship. Uh, both of them have deep expertise in building uh, foundations and bringing um, government, ecosystem, um, NGOs, think tanks, foundations together to create mass entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship in India. Uh, just to give you a context, uh, what's the landscape look like? Uh, India has over 70 million uh, small businesses. It's spread, spread across manufacturing services and uh, retail and wholesale. Um, 15 million manufacturing firms, 30 million retail, and 30 million in services. And if you look at the overall landscape, 97% of these companies have less than uh, five employees. Uh, uh, five employees. And, and even within that, uh, a large percentage, over 90% of the companies are, are uh, anywhere between one to, two, one to two, three employees really doing subsidence um, uh, in, rather than actual true entrepreneurs in terms of building uh, in a businesses. And if you look at the current impact of, um, of COVID, our estimate is over 50 million out of the 70 million has been impacted. And the overall industry um, uh, contributes to over 30% of GDP. And if you imagine that 50 million of those firms have been impacted by the current COVID crisis, and that is going to have a massive uh, impact on the overall employment in India. Um, and these companies actually contribute over 50% of India's exports. And even our exports will have a major impact uh, due to the, you know, the current crisis uh, because of SPs. And it is very important for um, the collectives uh, to stabilize and accelerate the growth of the small business and medium-sized business in India over the next, uh, you know, next several months and years. So in the panel, what we're going to do is talk a little bit about um, the motivation behind uh, the Astra and Game, and each of them will give us perspective. Then we'll talk about what um, we believe are the roles of government and NGOs in, in, in driving uh, the change over the next um, you know, several months and years. And then talk about how um, the different entities can come together and collaborate um, to be able to create this movement of mass entrepreneurship in, uh, in India. So those are the key uh, you know, talking points of uh, what we have. And uh, I'll welcome uh, Anand and Madan to the panel. I'll start with uh, Madan. Maybe Madan, you can define what do you mean by mass entrepreneurship? And our studies show there are 70 million small businesses. And are these all um, uh, in your definition entrepreneurs or is the definition a subset of it? Thanks, Pari, for uh, being this on for us and delighted to be here. Thanks to the Nudge guys and the, the ASA folks for pulling it all together. Uh, so, Pari, to your question, if you were to ask uh, a youth in Bangalore, who do you think is an entrepreneur? Uh, you will get questions, uh, to that question, you'll get answers to say that, listen, it's tech, it is it, it is all those guys building those platforms or geeky tech products or whatever, right? That's one extreme of the entrepreneurial spectrum. If, if you were to ask uh, our friends uh, uh, in the government or the Ministry of MSME, uh, you're going to probably get a view that these are smaller businesses, solopreneurs, uh, what we call as necessity entrepreneurs who need subsidies, who need, uh, who are seen largely as beneficiaries, right? And that's the other end of the spectrum. As you rightly pointed out, 94% or odd of our uh, 
111 people who work in the MSME or 70 million enterprises are in the one to two employees, right? At game, we started looking at how can these entrepreneurs start to be job creators? And the answer does not lie with any of these spectrums, but there's a missing middle where there are opportunity driven entrepreneurs who can operate with the growth mindset, who say that, listen, if the environment is right, uh, we can then start to scale and grow and therefore we can employ 5 to 20 people and that will give a huge fillip to the job creation and to, and to the GDP growth of the country. So the mass entrepreneurship is defined as an entrepreneur who is opportunity driven, who can grow and therefore in that growth enable anywhere from 5 to 20 jobs. And we also say it's mass because it has to happen in every nook and corner of the country. It is not just limited to the metro clusters or the tech uh, corridors or whatever, can we see this kind of an entrepreneur emerge from every village, every taluka of the country? And what can we as a collective, as a collaborative uh, do to enable that to happen? Got it, got it. And I think that's concept of the firefly entrepreneurs um, and what uh, Dr. Uh, Mayer Mayer talked about. Okay, great. And uh, Anand, uh, from your perspective, I want to start with, um, you know, your motivation for starting uh, the Astra and, and why did you start it and why did you choose the problem of you know, creating entrepreneurs? Why did you pick that? Why did you start and why did you pick this specific problem? Pari, first, thanks for uh, inviting me here and it's a real pleasure to be part of this narrative in this uh, discussion. So, um, you know, I started out mainly doing persistent for the last uh, 30 years and about five, six years back, I sort of had this thing that having reached a point of, uh, you know, sort of middle age in some sense, trying to think about what is a good problem to make a legacy option on. And we created a family foundation called Deasra Foundation. So it's a family philanthropy foundation in some sense. And when you do that, the idea there is to try to find one big problem that will last many years, say 25 years. And clearly employment and jobs is really a one big problem that I think India needs to address. And that sort of got us thinking about how do we create uh, jobs and when we started to look at jobs and job creation, it was very obvious that job creators is where we need to focus on. So what we found from where our sort of vantage sort of we are in, a, we are in Pune, which is a big urban area. So we found that urban entrepreneurs, there is a lot of growth opportunities there. There is no reason why every tailor in the city needs to feel so different from each other. So is it possible to help these small businesses to with their processes and activities so that they can be super efficient and effective. And if we, if we can get them to do that, what we found is that these small self-employed entrepreneurs is how I call them. They are very easily uh, able to grow their businesses from one or two to 15 and 20. And that jump that you can get of getting this engine of growth to happen on job side where every individual can become an entrepreneur, become a self-employed person. You're not dependent on jobs from someone else. And how do you get started and get going? And can we as a system of partners, ecosystem, NGOs work together to ensure that these small businesses don't fail? And how do we make them super successful so that they can deliver their growth on a, on a case individual at a time basis? And that's really our motivation for the ASRA and that's the platform that we have created. And what I'm very excited about with the partnership that we have with GAME and others is that there are many like-minded uh, NGOs or nonprofit social ventures all around, and we are trying to work together to see how to make sure that this 70 uh, million uh, small businesses are very effective, successful, and delivering to their promise and growing on an ongoing basis. This is the real growth engine for the world and for India as well. And Anand, just to give an, can you give an example in terms of what has been the impact, um, some stories in terms of the companies the Astra Foundation has been able to help. Uh, is it more in terms of starting a company or to Madan's point, um, moving from two to three employees to get to about 10, 20 employees or 10x growth in some level? Yeah, so we have lots of stories. We have now about 70,000 plus businesses wow. that we have supported in the last few years. And what we do through the platform is quite, uh, you know, helps them to get past the first level. I'm going to give you a few examples. So I have this lady that we are working, worked with uh, called Meenal who runs Sakhi Beauty Parlor in a small suburb of Pune called Loni Karbor. 
and in that area there are lots of students who are uh, you know staying as paying guests or in uh, shared apartments because there's a uh, colleges around there now clearly this lady is sell, providing a beauty salon and a beauty service so her business grew significantly by starting to understand that her market group is students they are on facebook and social media she should be on instagram on various other things because that's where these students are hanging out so we helped her create a simple program to help her push her beauty salon services on social media and that really saw a 3x to 5x improvement in her number of people who were coming to her and now she's catering to younger students so you know the pricing and how do you kind of track them and how do you go back to them when do you go so timings where do you meet them so all of these things are very specific to these kinds of industries depending on the different kinds of communities that they are operating in so we have examples of this on helping them with marketing with sales finding locations finding compliance and all of these kind of things and one other point i want to point out and this was something that uh, dr arun mehra also mentioned the hari krishnas don't necessarily come up with a plan they're not spending 3 years or even 3 months in a curriculum class that they know everything what to do these businesses just happen and once they happen they are very fragile in some sense because these guys don't know exactly what to do they are at the mercy of a whole bunch of people customers money lenders government all of these guys and trying to make sure that they can be robust and sub, be sort of get past those simple holes that they are going to find really makes them the makes the success happen interesting so there's a lot of basic bottlenecks they face in the simple things business. lots of simple things that you know would be obvious for someone who were to sit back and think about them but if i am a small uh, food counter that is running something like we ran with a restaurant again same kind of things fine tuning the menu depending on the locality helping out with putting the menu in a nicer format again small things can give you three times improvement in your sales and outcomes so you know small interventions on an ongoing basis is what these businesses need and what we have done at at uh, the asra foundation is to make a list of about 75 to 80 services or processes which we find are uh, things that these small businesses need on an ongoing basis and we have templated them and they are available online so people who get stuck we have something for them to get out of the you know being meaning get unstuck in some sense yeah, yeah, very interesting it's almost just in time to support them as they face these uh, bottlenecks uh madan from your perspective uh, what has been the motivation of uh, you know starting a game and you had several initiatives uh, you spearhead but why game and and what has been the impact so far sure uh, so when ravi make it and i uh, started discussing this two years ago uh, uh, interestingly all of us had worked together in one form or another we were a part of uh, social venture partners in bangalore and at the india level as well uh, we had conceived something called as a million jobs mission so this whole aspect of where are the job creation engines for the country was playing heavily on our minds interestingly both of them are also angel investors in uh, the social enterprise that are run called one bridge which is all about creating entrepreneurs in the villages uh, so one question that was always playing on my mind was that listen in the social enterprise that i run what is the what is the biggest impact that we can do maybe we can reach 100000 entrepreneurs in the next 3 4 years but the need of the hour in the country is like 150 million that is the number of youth who will enter the workforce in the next 10 years they'll all be looking for jobs uh in the traditional sense that we speak today and where are the jobs for them so when we were discussing on this issue that's when we realized that listen maybe there are a thousand models out there maybe there are a thousand variants of these models that need to come up but there's no single place or anybody wanting to create an entrepreneurial uh movement or a model to go to so that's how game was conceived saying can we be the go to for all organizations and all ecosystem actors right from governments to uh the fantastic work that they are is doing to a lot of uh, work that individual ngos are doing on the ground to academic institutions to corporates can we create a platform so to speak where everybody can come learn together 
can do experiments, pilots together, can accelerate the learning process. Uh, can we, and, and then collaborate with each other. You know, as, as Anand was speaking, uh, if you can then add dimensions to uh, the, the, the impact that uh, Deastra is doing, what if all of the 70,000 people were to be given uh, an access to a wide a mentoring network? What if they were given access to uh, uh, not just uh, 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 create employment for themselves, what if they were able to create internships for youth in their communities? Right? What if they were able to access government schemes at the tap of a button? So then if you start surrounding uh, other solutions and other solution providers around solutions that are working, then the impact is, is multiplied significantly. Right? So that uh, thought process led us to the, to the dream uh, about one and a half years ago where it took uh, shape that let's create an alliance. So the most important word in the Global Alliance for Mass Entrepreneurship is the alliance, that we need to operate as an alliance. Game in our minds clearly is not an organization, but is a network, is a network of all of us who can come together, learn fast, fail forward, right? And, 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 and figure out how can we solve this humongous problem that we see today uh, of creating jobs and creating equal opportunities for everyone. Uh, and and Madan, um, the one is just the alliances you can form all of this, right? But how does it make an impact at an individual entrepreneur level? Huh? How do you measure it? And you have examples of how game is impacting specific entrepreneurs. And you sure. mentioned about growing 10x. Uh, that's great, right. bro. That's what VCs look for. And you're looking for that mm -hmm. in, in, in SMB, small, small companies. So it's how, how does right. it work? So we, we look at impact at two levels. Uh, one is, of course, in our mission statement, we have said game has to catalyze an entrepreneurial ecosystem that can create 10 million new mass entrepreneurs, uh, you know, creating 50 million jobs, half of them should be women. That's what we've said. But we clearly know that it has to happen at the next level where we are able to bring in hundreds of ecosystem actors together. Right? And, sure. and, 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 and we are able to contribute towards the mission. So when we work when we do not work directly with the entrepreneurs as, as game as an organization, as a secretariat, we work with entities that work with entrepreneurs. Okay. Right? Now, there are several things that we're doing both directly and at the organization, at the secretariat, at the alliance level. Uh, take, for instance, uh, in Bangalore, as an example, uh, we have actually taken on a women entrepreneurial task force. So the task force has about 10, 15 odd uh, ecosystem actors, right, from government to committed individuals who want to see entrepreneurship happen, uh, to corporates who are supporting this whole journey, and we ran a program called Futurepreneurs to identify stories. So one of the one of the things uh, as a pillar. So if I were to just step back, at Game we believe that to create an entrepreneurial ecosystem, five things have to happen uh, over a period of time. Uh, one, you need to you need to make mass entrepreneurship aspirational. Today, if you go out of the metro and ask any kid, what do you want to be? Nine out of 10 chances you'll hear, I want to become a government, I want a government job, I want to become a policeman or an inspector, whatever that is, right? So the narrative is still very government job led because that gives security, right? In 10 years, can we change that to say, I want to become a mass entrepreneur? Can we make mass entrepreneurship aspirational at a local level? Two, uh, how do we embed entrepreneurship into the curriculum of, of schools itself? One of our partners, Make It Runs Udyam, and Udyam has been instrumental to, in working with the government of Delhi to embed, uh, to create an entrepreneurial mindset curriculum and 7 lakh uh, 20,000 kids across uh, government uh, schools in Delhi are undergoing this curriculum on a daily basis, right? How do we make that happen with every kid in the country? Third, how do we make sure that a kid coming out of a college is able to get onto a path of being a job creator than a job seeker. Uh, what virtual incubation facilities can we create in every district, every taluk to make that journey. So how do you address easy? it early in the grassroots itself before, before they actually exactly. become entrepreneurs? Okay. Okay. Exactly. Coming on to, you need yeah. to work at a deeper level. Got it. Uh, just uh, going on to Anand. So Anand, you, you, you've been uh, uh, having this journey over the last few years. And uh, we talked about collectives and, and how all of the different parts of the ecosystem has to come together. Uh, but in, even today, I mean, so what are some of your frustrations? For example, uh, you know, government just continues to focus on how do we create another TCS, another 500,000 employee uh, companies in the country. And 
And what has been your frustrations and challenges as you go through this with the overall ecosystem, be it government and <laughs> other NGOs and others? I think you know these. <clears throat> You know this quite well, uh, Pari, and uh, maybe you should also comment a bit on this topic. But you see, the thing is, uh, lots of these small businesses don't know uh, what they're doing, and the government actually misses out on this group. Uh, the very small uh, you know, self-help group or the mudra loans or whatever, below 50,000 kind of stuff, there's uh, grants that the government has. And the government likes to look at the very large ones. Everyone talks about the very big businesses. And this was mentioned in the unicorn context. So the ones that we are looking at are not the absolutely the people who are uneducated or any of those kinds of things. These people are educated. They, they do a, make a decent living. These are decent businesses that can be growing and they just don't want to be really large. So they are two to five people businesses. They make good amount of money. So take photographers. So take weddings and photography. The amount of money people mm -hmm. spend in weddings and photography is significant. People who are doing this 